Okay, so I think I got uh, this going. If my fan kicks on, hopefully it doesn't, but my fan might kick on, which might mess things up because I'm recording my voice through my mat, my laptop's microphone. Um, so that may mess things up, but hopefully it doesn't and uh, we can get going. So I felt like this might be actually be better than my stupid cell phone because it sounds like a potato coming out of that. But I you know, figured I would kind of make a video showing how to create some cool synthwave sounds. Um, so we are going to make something out of this. And what I'll do sometimes actually is even, you know, I'll, I'll just make some sort of like bass or melody with just that, just saws, um, and kind of build it up and then go back and kind of do the sound design. That way it kind of keeps me. Uh, going I, and, and I don't lose kind of creativity. Or I don't like lose what I'm hearing in my head So sometimes I will actually make a song out of <laughs> These awful sounds because they're competing against one another um, Anyway, so you can do this in any synth. Uh, I'm using repro 5. I love this synth. I love everything from UHE actually or UE have you he however you want to say it. Um, Everything they make you know zebra repro diva. They're all awesome um, so and I, I honestly find myself using nothing else. So you can do it in any synth. Um, silent is actually interesting uh, in terms of pulse width modulation, which is what's really going to make this sound. So silent may not be the best one for it, but uh, really anything that allows for pulse width modulation is going to be, uh, you're going to be able to make this sound. So first thing that I'm going to do is to make both of these oscillators square waves and I'm going to detune them against one another. Let me turn off that bass real quick. There we go. So uh, what's gonna make part of the sound is this long tail. So I'm gonna add some release. And you wanna be careful because you add you know too much and you're really gonna muddy things up. But um, we, I want this. You know, we want the sound to kind of flow uh, one note into the next. So the, the, the long release is gonna kind of give it that character. Uh, the other thing is, if you listen, you can kind of hear that that pop of the attack of the the notes. And I don't want that. So I want this as almost like an arp pad type sound. So I'm gonna turn the attack up, and, and hopefully that's gonna kind of like you know mix each note into the next. Um, if you want to kind of make it, you know, voice detuned, you can really turn it up if you want to kind of, you know, add some, some movement to the pitch. Yeah, but that's up to you. And that's, you know, that's something you can do with an LFO on the pitch and another synth. Um, this just happens to have this. Happens to have this built right in. So that's up to you. Um, I do sometimes, or usually like to add a little bit of distortion. Just like a little bit. Um, now, what's really going to make this sound is pulse width modulation. So, if you don't know what pulse width modulation is, so you don't really like understand it, um, I'll do my best. So, Diva is actually great because you can kind of see it in the scope. So, uh, a regular square wave is going to look like this. So the easiest way I, I like to think about it, or you can think about it, is you have the square wave, you have this line, which is like the center point of the wave. When you modulate the pulse width, you're going to change where that center line goes. And the closer it gets to the kind of starting point or end point, uh, it's going to get really nasally. Um, and as it moves back to center, it's going to get more of that like hollow, you know, that hollow uh, square sound. So in Diva, the uh, shape mod is going to do that. So if I turn this on and I start to move this, I want you to watch what that does to the uh, to the wave. So as you see, as you know, with the modulation, you're going to be moving that, that center line, uh, and that is going to give you some really cool movement. Um, and I, what I like to do is turn up the rate, make it pretty fast, and I think that gives one of my more favorite sounds um, is that pulse width modulation. So if we go back to if we go back to Repro.
The easiest way to do that is you have pulse width A and pulse width B. These are going to be the kind of destinations for the wheel mod. Now, if you have a keyboard, you can just do this with your actual wheel mod, or you can just you know use it with mouse. So you're going to turn on the pulse width of A and the pulse width of B, and now you're going to end up with this sound. So without and with. Now, like I said, I like to turn it up a little bit uh, and keep the move the rate up, so it's going to sound like this. For this sound, I'm going to leave the envelope amount at zero, and it's just cut off. It's just basically going to be a low-pass filter, because again, I want this as like an ARP pad kind of sound, so I don't want uh, like the pluckiness if I was to kind of you know add add this envelope here. And a lot of times I will use Velvet. I think it's a great tape saturation. Um, however, because I'm adding the chorus afterwards, I, I'm not a huge fan of the built-in chorus. So I like to use Tal a lot, but this is going to add sometimes some um, white noise, like a hiss. And if that runs through the chorus, it starts to sound a little weird. So I'm going to use uh, Real Bus for that. So if you add chorus, uh, if you don't have this, is like the greatest thing in the world. Tal chorus uh, is really going to thicken and widen up that sound. Uh, and then you can add some tape saturation with real bus. Um, you can honestly use anything that you would like. Um, you know, for the purpose of this, I'll just stick with 30 IPS. Uh, so delay is to taste. I just throw in a ping pong delay, and you can really change it up however you want. But uh, delay will kind of uh, give it more of a tail, and again, have it kind of like blend in from one note to the next. And you can also add some reverb. Both these sounds you would have to EQ, you can hear there's some, some tough frequencies in there, but for the purpose of this we'll just leave it. Uh, now for the bass. So for these sounds I like a kind of like a like almost like a bass pad. Um, I like using divas, you can use the mini, mini mono, mono, whatever. It's the mood. Um, but what you can do is, let's bring this down an octave, and let's kick this in a little bit and bring this down two octaves. Now, you can kind of flip between either having it both be an octave down or two. What I like to do uh, is kind of bring it down two octaves and then mix in, mix in a little bit of the sound so you're not like blasting it with like tons of, of really low kind of gross mud, uh, but you can still get some of that low end. And then you can detune uh, these two against each other. Uh, if you want, you can add some feedback, and that if you give a little bit, that will kind of boost up the low end. And now because it's supposed to just kind of sit in the lower registers, the, the lower parts of the mix, you want to bring the cutoff down. And of course, we got to add some chorus. It's going to thicken up and wind it out. So if we bring... Whoa. So if we bring both these sounds together, um, I'm actually going to mess with the cutoff on my keyboard so you won't see me using my mouse um, to change anything but I'll be turning some knobs to change the cutoff. So if we bring both these sounds together, sound like this.
so that's it. So I hope this turned out okay. I hope that was helpful, and you know, maybe I can make more of these. Um, but yeah, that's a start for what I think are some some pretty cool synthwave sounds. Uh, that's it. Peace.